It's my first day. No, not really. <laughs> I wish I could use that excuse, but sadly I can't. That's a good one. You should just run that excuse on everybody and see how it goes. I have to ask about Teenage Dirtbag. Sure. My very first question is, what do you have against Iron Maiden? Why do you think I have something against them? Because apparently only Teenage Dirtbags listen to Iron Maiden. <laughs> then that's a bad thing? Oh. <laughs> Maiden's one of my favorite bands. I uh, still play a lot of Maiden songs when I'm warming up on guitar. Uh, That's awesome. <laughs> um, no one's ever asked me that one before. That's a funny one. I feel like, where are you? Columbus, Ohio. Okay, okay. So I got columbus right off the bat. You got um, columbus yes. <laughs> absolutely. Uh, well, we love Columbus, but we can't. you can't park there. Let's no, you can Let's just be honest about let's get that out of the way. You can't park in Columbus, Ohio. City of Columbus, hey, your city council, if you are listening to this, parking, <laughs> Wheatus is not a fan. Well, I am a fan of the city, but, you know, I learned how to drive in New York City, and you can find parking anywhere in New York City easier than you can anywhere in Columbus, Ohio. Wow, I'm going to make sure that that is, like, the headline for this interview. <laughs> Like, but in all seriousness, the music. Uh, you may, can find no... parking easier in Manhattan than you can in Columbus, yeah. Ohio. CD 92.9. Facts, facts, hard <laughs> facts. I have data. Um, but in all seriousness, uh, Maiden is um, a, a real true inspiration to me. They're one of the sort of like pivotal bridges from the Led Zeppelins to the Metallicas of the world. And, um, and as you know, there's no sort of no modern heavy music without Metallica. So therefore, you're tracing it all the way back through Maiden and you can't you can't go without that. But, um, you know, early on, they were really nice to us. They kind of like reached out and uh, offered help uh, from their management, which we desperately needed and um, wound up uh, doing a song with Bruce Dickinson from Maiden in, at Abbey Road in August of 2001. They're awesome. He drove me back to Paddington Station near near christmas time that same year because we had christmas dinner together at his family's house it was like oh that's so wholesome like, yeah they really became like big brother figures or father figures i should say so still talking about like a little bit of teenage dirtbag what's it been like watching that song blow up 22 years later i don't know if you're on the ticky talky machine but I, like i, I, I am on the ticky talky yeah. Uh, I, I mean, anyone who's anyone has been using that song. And I mean, it's been just everywhere the last, like 22 years later. It's like, let's just explode again. Yeah, it's really cool. Um, you know, we have learned not to count it out over the years because it just does have those sort of resurgence moments. This one was more bananas than anything else. More bananas than the One Direction one or... Phoebe Bridgers or uh, Dashboard doing it or uh, Generation Kill putting it in one of their episodes. It was like, it was like suddenly like Madonna knew, knew the words and Gaga was <laughs> singing it and like yeah. Cheech and Chong and Chevy Chase and like all these figures from my childhood who, who were like suddenly into it. Kevin Bacon did one, so I'm in the six degrees now, I guess, by default. It kept stacking up too. Like it started and, you know, we've been around a long time touring as a as a small band and making records as a small independent band and it was like oh something's happening that'll be over tomorrow eight days later it was like oh it's still happening that'll be over next week and then now it's the latest TikTok trend yeah and then neil degrasse tyson did one have you seen the drew barrymore one we have yeah oh, we uh, that was that's... like peak teenage dirtbag right there it, it really is like you got to be kidding me you know um it was a it was a big it became a big deal and we a month and a half later we're still talking about this and it's still happening and somebody very famous recently did one like the past week oh it's the pixies the pixies <laughs> did one and we were like holy shit you know like, like, are you kidding me like pixies like i mean like that's for for me like when i was sort of finding my voice as a early 20s songwriter, I was listening a lot to uh, Trompe Le Monde, the Pixies record, which is the one that Dave Grohl references a lot. And I understand that it's because it's got a certain features Joey Santiago in a certain way that the other records maybe don't. And it um, has a lot of this like sort of driving guitar intensity. It also has some really interesting, the more, most interesting songwriting, in my opinion, is on that Pixies record. And, you know, it was just like, these, they fucking know us. How do they know who we are? Um, so it was, it was a moment for us. It was a real moment. Uh, touched on all places. It touched on ten-year-old me trying to watch Cheech and Chong movies when I was, you know, could, wasn't legal to rent 
those movies on VHS. And then it touched on like my early 20s songwriting vibes. And then like all the music we grew up with. And, you know, you, like you said, Drew Barrymore. I mean, that's wild. So what is your best teenage dirtbag story for you personally? So this is an interesting thing you're saying. So lots of people have like pictures of themselves at parties when they were kids. I saw somebody putting a picture of themselves on the hood of a police car with cuffs on. Like, <laughs> like people have had their dirtbag moments and stuff. Uh, my my dirtbag moments as, as a kid were a little bit more like kind of violent and scary. It was like a lot of fist fights where I grew up, and like uh, there was a satanic ritual homicide in the woods near my house when I was a kid. It kind of like kicked off the whole satanic panic thing. We're like ground zero for that in, in my town. So I think that like what 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 that amounted to was like a sort of a fear and like an like a sort of defensive posturing. I went to a boys school that was far away from my home. I commuted back and forth toward the city uh, from Long Island every day on the train. It was like three hours round trip on the train, you know? So it was like, I didn't, and it, I didn't have any of the typical um, teenage dirtbag uh, TikTok experiences. You know, at the time, honestly, it was kind of like trying to escape the scary, violent stuff. I think that uh, it's interesting to watch everybody find their own themselves in the song. Even like Katie Couric did one and she was like, I wasn't really a teenage dirtbag. I was a good girl. Here's a picture of me planting flowers with my mother when, you know, like, <laughs> like <laughs> so everybody can make it their own up to and including people who are like, geez, I can't make a teenage dirtbag real because I don't have any pictures of myself with people in high school having good times. You know, those people are real, too. So I'm not going to forget about them because I was like closer to that than I was to the other side of it. But uh, generally speaking, it's flexible. Like you can be whatever kind of dirtbag you think you are. You know, I like that. Um, yeah. So the name Weedus comes from a nickname that your father gave you and your brother. We dust that. Well, my brother, my sister and I, he when we were infants, he he, um, you know, in his sort of baby talk language, he would say the word little. And that word evolved into Lidl, which evolved into Weedle, which evolved into Weedus. Weedus isn't a word either. You in, in my family, this is a sort of more contemporary example. My girlfriend, we've been together for uh, almost 12 years now. She had a little blind Boston Terrier when we first met. Oh. And, uh, and the dog's name was Fanny. And I started calling her Fanny Banana. And then that turned into banana mucine, which is like an Italianized version. Part of my family's Italian. We would like stick some like Italian word on the end of everything <laughs> and, and in, in the loving, in the loving sort of like, here's some more pasta kind of way. Yeah. And um, all of a sudden saying, where's the mucine? Where'd she go? You know, and that was from banana. So I don't I like it just it just evolves, you know, it's just yeah. The important part of it for me was that it didn't mean anything. Yeah. It was like a meaningless word that just was a placeholder and I didn't want the name to mean anything to anyone. Or it just means that you really like wheat. <laughs> we all know that you hate corn, apparently. I hate corn? What? I, hate I mean, corn? your band's name isn't Corn Us. That would be a funnier band name than Weed Us, but um, <laughs> corn, um, <laughs> we should talk to Jonathan Davies and see if he'd be interested in forming a collab with corn called Corn Us. That is an idea that was hatched here on the radio in Columbus, Ohio. This is fantastic. I love you that. You can't park, but you can form collabs that have better names than both bands. I would literally give all of my money to see that collaboration happen. <laughs> Stranger things have happened. That's true. That is that is very true. We all know that the 90s was, you know, big in Seattle. That was big grunge scene there. And you came up in New York in the late 90s. So what did that scene look like? Was it still grungy or what? what no, did not so much. Like? I mean, um, one, of, one of the bands I was most influenced by back then was a band called Soul Coughing. Mike Doty uh, is the singer songwriter from Soul Coughing vocalist. And I think that they were sort of the... Um, next generation of like the velvet underground sort of thing it was like a lot of jazz influence very sort of avant-garde in its textures particular groove oriented which is a new york thing i mean like you know every time i got a my hands on a mixtape in my boys high school which was like a handful of times it had lots of metal on it and lots of hip-hop public okay. enemy ll cool j tribe called quest 
De La Soul, you know, they, all of that stuff. So it was like the hybridizing, the local music thing in New York was very sort of like the blurred lines of, of culture and race. And um, so hip hop was always a thing that we utilized as part of our production aesthetic. I always wanted the band to have like hip hop low end and rock and roll high end. You know, groove kind of comes from like the mid range down, all the low end of the song should be real groovy. And the high end of the song, I was trying to create this hybrid between like James Taylor, Metallica or ACDC or something like that. And vocally, I was mostly singing along with a lot of female artists, uh, Indigo Girls and Ani DeFranco. That was who and Paul Simon were, were the three vocalists that I kind of was singing along with the most when I was finding my voice. I think that that was where it came from. As a New York band, there was that eclectic collage. And as a result, I think we got like kind of classed in with this other rock music that was popular at the time was mostly coming out of Southern California. So a lot of that music that was happening back then when it was like sort of rock and roll music or next wave of rock and roll music was from California, but we weren't, we were from New York and we were like kind of weird, you know, we had like a percussionist and we were using these old school hip hop production techniques and things like that. So we couldn't really fit in um, in terms of the sound. But uh, we had rock guitars, and I think that made it that people were kind of like, oh, it's a pop punk band, which is not one of the main influences. Although I love Crass and, and the Ramones and um, post-punk hardcore like Quicksand and Helmet and those bands, Fugazi as well. They were all influential, and as I mentioned, the Pixies. But like, it wasn't a primary influence punk. It was sort of like a, a DNA influence, you know, just yeah. from having listened to so much of it. Interesting. I love how you guys, like using hip hop as your groove and then putting rock guitars over it like that's well when i listen to the rhythm sections in like incubus or hoobastank or lincoln park or any of those sort of like i guess you would call them new metal kind of second wave bands i hear gospel in the rhythm section yeah like those those drums and bass lines are played like gospel you know mm -hmm. you know american music is a stew and i feel like it you you just take whatever whatever serves the song in the groove wherever your school is coming from that's what it has to be you know man that's like really insightful i don't think that i've ever really talked to a band about like music technicalities before but like i like that anyway, yeah. 10 out of 10. <laughs> you guys have been involved in a lot of movies and shows from the chilling adventures of sabrina to the jackie chan adventures if you could pick one of your songs to be in any movie or any tv show what would it be so I don't watch a lot of TV. I'm just going to get that out there. When I eat breakfast, sometimes I throw on a, an episode of The Sopranos because it's just the writing is so fantastic. And I just want to like vibe that for a few minutes while I'm eating. And it's very gets, New York get, Italian of you. Right yeah, it gets there. the like, creep. Yeah, exactly. I watch The Sopranos yeah. while I eat my breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it just gets the kind of creative vibe flowing for me for the day. So I'm sort of a big Brad Pitt fan. Um, that would be super cool if that happened. That would be fantastic. Anything Brad Pitt's in. Okay. Ah, Viola Davis. She's so good. It's incredible. She just hurts to watch her do her art. And um, I wouldn't mind having one of our newer songs in a movie with her doing something, you know, because you know how there's like certain people, you might not even know the movie. But if you walk in the room and you see that person's face on the screen, you're just like, hold on a second. So it's one, like, one this second. is going to be good. Yeah, like, like I, ha I just have to watch this person perform. She's one of those people, uh, Jennifer Coolidge. Okay. If I walk into a room and Jennifer Coolidge is on the screen, I'm like, stop, shh, 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 hold on, guys. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what the movie is. It doesn't have to be something I know. It's just the person. And do you have a specific song that you would like uh, Brad Pitt, Viola Davis, and Jennifer Coolidge when they do their super movie in 2023? A song called Valentine, which is the title track from our 2013 record, The Valentine LP. I always felt like that one could be good music for a film. And another song called Temporary Song, which we put out last year. Those two, um, I'd like to see them do something with somebody I appreciate and admire in a film. Yeah. All right, so when they do their super movie in 2023, where it just, yes. you know, Brad Pitt and Viola Davis just suddenly yeah, are together. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, yeah. Right. and Jennifer Coolidge. Jennifer, Jennifer Coolidge. Coolidge. It'll, it'll be like a weird, like a, like a dark comedy, like the movie Election. You ever seen that movie? No. Matthew, Matthew Broderick. Oh, that's a, dark, that's a dark comedy, boy. That is, like, grim and hilarious. 
Sounds like yeah. something I would like. Yeah, dark comedies, dark comedies. So my last question for you, uh, before I let you go back into the world, one person or one million people might hear this. What do you want to say to the world? Uh, that we're touring the Midwest starting October 20th. Weedus.com forward slash shows. Definitely coming to Columbus. Um, very excited about that. Hopefully you'll find parking. I doubt it. Um, but <laughs> but uh, we'll, we're going to do our best. You know, we're still going to enjoy Columbus. You know, it doesn't mean you can't enjoy a place just because you can't park there. You know, sell your car, you know, whatever. But um, uh, the rest of what I have to say is that we're putting out songs from our uh, 2020 uh, anniversary edition of our first record. The original had 10 songs. The 2020 anniversary has 20 songs. So it's twice as good. Uh, we found a bunch of songs from over the years that felt like they belonged on album one, but we just never recorded them because they sounded like album one. So this was a big chance to uh, add 10 songs to the original uh, 10 and double the uh, size of our first album. I have five more songs to mix. All right on that record and we will be done with the 20 song version covid really slowed us down but uh aside from that touring the midwest very soon um october through november and uh touring the uk the following year and then we're going to be back for festivals in the spring somewhere uh probably across the united states so it's all very exciting uh we have never been this active in our lives as an independent band and it's very fun to be sort of doing lots of stuff again so thank you. Well, yeah. I'm looking forward to you coming through Columbus. Uh, I'm also looking forward to using this to roast Columbus for getting more parking. Uh, that's Wait, my, don't it, it's my new favorite bit. We, we love the city. In fact, Ohio is one of our favorite. Like we, we had way back in the day in the summer of 2000, right before the first record was just as it was coming out, we had this killer show in Toledo. It, it was recorded and the, the show in Toledo is fantastic. It was our first real show that got bootlegged and passed around by kids. So it, in, in a sense, it all started in Ohio for us, you know, in the live, live touring in America kind of vibe. It really did. Even if we can't park in Columbus, we'll co keep coming back. Oh, well, we love that. We love to have you guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Thank you. It was fun? Question mark? It was a lot of fun. We had a ball. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. I hope you have a good rest of your day. Thank you, Bailey. <laughs>